man, look who we got here, Mr. SPX, the D-Gen himself showing up to class. We got Big Sushi Dark Magician in here, love to see it. How's everybody doing? Hope we all had a good day today. Good, had a good day today. Not too many trades. Did get to catch a nice little ripper there upside, and uh, that's about it, you know. Hopped in voice chat at the end of the day, listened to some degeneracy, and uh, called it a day. Yeah, I'm going to talk about how I traded that today um, a little bit and uh, what I did right and wrong and what my plan was and how price action helped me get there. It's probably looking better than my weekly 200s. Sure did uh, sell off some Nvidia. Huh? What's up with that? Great earnings. Anybody know why? What didn't they like? They did not like something. Welcome, welcome everybody. We'll give it a few more minutes. See if we get some people trickling in. How'd everybody's day go? Hope we all had a good one. Hope we didn't swing in video. Or if you did, hope you swung a put. I mean, yeah, but it like sort of did blow it out of the water. There's a few of those categories that they, that I, and I just did the quick glance. I need to read it all. But there was some of the categories that they're beating analyst estimates by 10%. That is a blowout, you know? But there was something in there. I'm sure that there's something in the guidance or, you know, I mean, something with the guidance is all I can figure. Plus that whole Blackwell deal has just been a mess. So, I mean, not really, but but if they had to push it back, then I imagine it's probably, uh, that could have played a role in it. I know there's some fear they might have to bump it back a quarter or two to get that deal all wrapped up, but who knows. Welcome, welcome everybody. Hope we're all doing good.
Yeah, SMCI. <laughs> SMCI down in the dumps, huh? Yeah. And just wild for like bad news and then more bad news, you know? It's always it's always interesting when they do that. I mean, yeah, that thing is just 630 here last week, 405 now, 412. That's a big sell though. I mean, what what are you thinking? Like, I mean, I like, you know, I'm who knows like what really went on or whatever, but how uh you know why are you gonna cook the books on like a multi hundred billion dollar company or whatever? You know, I think like your money's good enough that you probably don't need to like be doing sneaky business deals and trying to keep them off the books, you know. going to be interesting to see what it drops to, though, into the split. Me and Lambos were talking. I don't know if he's in here, but he brought it up, so I had to look it up. But there's, you know, some of those big money people, their, their averages are miles below where we are now. You know, you're talking 40, 80 bucks is where the big people were really getting into this thing. And so... Uh, I do believe they'll keep it up a little bit, but they're still up a thousand percent from a $40 entry, so they're chilling. Okay, give me one second. Okay, welcome, welcome everybody. Happy to have you here, Dirty River. Uh, gonna be talking price action tonight. Um, definitely one of my favorite things about trading. You know, I I I like looking at charts, and so I'm you know I think I'm lucky in that aspect. Um, I think a lot of people don't look at charts enough, and there is definitely a fine line of looking at charts too much, but. For anybody who doesn't know, I do get asked the question a lot, and I even just see the terminology used incorrectly. And, you know, what is price action? And what price action is, is really just, you know, how people like me and Tilio and 1K, you know, we tell you, look at the chart. Like, what is the chart telling you? You know, trade the chart. And so what reading price action is, is reading what the chart is telling you. And... You know, that can be done in many different ways, um, you know, sport and resistance, trends, maybe you use fibs, maybe you just read the candles, you know, that's Al Brooks is, he just got that 20 EMA on there, but he's mostly just reading the candles in front of him. So price action can mean many different things, um, you know, have, you know, it can mean as technical as you want it to mean, but for what I do and for what Al Brooks does and for most other people, it's just really keeping it simple. And it goes back to, you know, the things that I always try to teach you of, you know, remove your biases. If the market's ranging, trade the range. If the market's trending, tra trade the trend. And, you know, identifying ranges, that's reading price action. Identifying trends, that is reading price action. And the other things that it can do for you are, you know, we see people all the time, you know, like, I mean, today we saw it on NVIDIA, you know, oh, NVIDIA is going to be at 160 tomorrow. NVIDIA is going to be at 150 tomorrow. And people just not understanding what that means in the big picture, you know, and so price action can really make you step back and understand just how massive of a move it takes for NVIDIA to move $20, $30. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're seeing a big move at 10 bucks or whatever. Um, but Price action helps us stay in reality and stay reading the chart. And I kind of, you know, made the joke and the tab or when I was posting the class about dark magician of, you know, don't buy calls at resistance. And for anybody who doesn't know, that's MMA. Don't follow him on his alerts, you know, just put that disclaimer out here, you know. And so that's what we're going to be talking tonight is how do we use price action to identify entries, um, you know, whether we're ranging, whether we're trending, what are some things that I like to look for? And 
you know, we're going to, I'm just going to kind of show you whole, tr like whole trade plans, starting on the large time frame, going down into the smaller time frame, and then really reading the candles, looking at volume, looking, you know, at trends and the, you know, what the candles tell us and having that, you know, having the best possible entry we can ends up being so, so important because it protects us from having to take huge stop outs, you know, and like I always talk about, it, you know, if you're a swing trader today, we're most, we're going to be focusing mostly on day trading. Um, of course, all of these same ideas can be added to scalps, but we're going to be talking day trading today because that's what more people want to do. Um, you know, I like scalping. I like those fast trades. I know there's a few of us in here that do like the fast trades, but most people want to day trade. They want to be able to like hold those contracts, sell when it's time to sell, you know, not be kind of rushing to say, you know, oh, I got the quick 20% bounce. I'm out right now. Um, they want to let the trade work. And so that's fine. And what we're going to talk about today is those entries. How can you plan your trades better? What are some things that you can do to, you know, really reduce your risk? Because you guys all know, I preach it. Our, our number one job as traders is to protect our capital. You know, you don't, you don't want to take big losses all the time. You don't want to be, you know, stopping out for your 30s and 40 percents all the time because that's really going to catch up to you. Um, you know, if you stop out for on a trade for 30 or 40 percent, then as long as you're, you know, responsibly position sizing, not yellowing, you know, keeping your positions always the same size, similar size stop outs. I mean, if you take one 30 percent stop out, then it takes a whole 30% trade to make that back. And, you know, frequently 30% on a contract is quite a bit and you are, you, you might not see it. And so you always want to keep the losses as small as possible. And price action is one of the best ways to look at it. And we're going to use spy today. Um, for the first couple of examples, we're going to talk about the price action of today, how I traded it and you know, some of the moves that I made in the market, I traded very little today. I, a lot of the time, don't like trading days like this. I even mentioned it in my tab, you know, don't get too hung up in any single trade today because we're likely going to see some volatility. And we did, you know, we saw SPY sell, you know, bounce $3. Now they're $2. Then 20 minutes later, it's down $4 from there. And then an hour and a half later, it's up four or five bucks from there. And so today was just a really great example of look at the big picture, look at where we're trading in the market, and then start to base those intraday trades on the big picture. And so, um, you know, for me, obviously trading spy, most people in here, trade spy i know a bunch of people are trading spx right now but for the most part you know people really are trading spy more than anything else we of course you know a lot of people trade you know your teslas amazons apples all of those names as well but most people throughout the day these days and you know to you're taking trades on spy um i'm sure part of that is from some of the influence of the analysts you know but me and flips talk spy all the time um trade spy all the time and so <clears throat> people see a lot of it being traded. And so today what I want to do, and we're just going to start with, you know, uh, a nice blank chart and then show you kind of what we could have done going into today to, you know, really, uh, uh, you know, have a plan going into the market, because that's something that I always recommend. And so something that, I mean, I think everybody's seen this. I've been posting it for weeks. Tilio posts it all the time. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, I've been like, it's been important. These FIB levels have just been working really strong on any time you have these like big, massive moves, you know, um, you can, you can, you can use these relatively reliable. The issue with this with them is, is this is such a big move. You kind of have long distances between your levels. So, you know, you don't just want to enter spy calls at 510 and hope you get a move to 523. Did it happen? Yes. But this isn't normal. You know, we did really track these levels well. And then 
All I do is I want some levels around where we are trading. So I'm always going to mark any of these major highs that we have, you know, where, where sell off started, anything like that. I'm always interested in. I'm even going to mark this one down here because, you know, pretty nice, obvious, strong low. I want to mark this high up here. Um, you know, obviously big crucial level and I'm not right on the money. So if you want to, I guess I should probably be a little bit better than that. Um, if you want to, you know, trade these levels, these are all good, very usable levels. Um, next thing that I want to do, I always like to take notes of any sort of like gaps that we have in the market. Obviously this one has now been filled after the last few days. Um, and then really just anywhere we took like some, you know, where maybe we sold and then took a big bounce. So these are really all the levels up here where I care about. And you notice very, very quickly, we got a pile of them down here. So those are the types of things I want to be aware of. Um, I guess I'd probably put this one on here too. Nice big bounce off of there up to a new all-time high. That's always important. So these are the levels that I would have. And then that's all I need. Now I go into the day and I don't, I don't need to have a bias. I don't need to be bearish. I don't need to, you know, I don't, I don't need any of that stuff. I just need my levels on the chart and I want to trade my levels on the chart. And you guys might have noticed I, I tried to post it, you know, first thing this morning. I'm sure some of these levels are a little bit off because I was a little more detailed when I was putting them in. Um, but I tried to I tried to post my two main charts that I watch every day because I'm always going to watch a chart that mostly has big daily levels on it. And then I'm also going to have my scalping chart. And so um you know, these levels are going to be very, very similar to what I have. I don't remember exactly what I had on there. I guess I can look. I had 559.6. We're pretty close there. And I had 556.83. We're pretty dang close there. And then as we started selling, uh, I got at 555.36 36 and 554.78. So we're, we're close enough on these levels. And so these are the levels that I have on the day. And you know, something that I'm always obviously, you know, when it comes to price action, something that I'm obviously always going to take note of, and I think matters, I think most people should assume matters, is any of these pre-market highs and lows. Just going into the day, I frequently don't, um, I frequently don't, you know, trade based on pre-market high and low breaks. I prefer to use them as targets if I'm in a trade. You know, if I'm long, I'm looking for pre-market high. If I'm short, I'm looking for pre-market low. Well, today was an interesting day where we opened basically right between them. And then I'm going to put pre-market low on here. I'm going to turn it red just so we know what it is. You know, that's it. Um, so I'm going to put it on there because it does help a little bit with price action today. Um, and so now we're just going to talk about the day. Um, and what you could have looked for, some things that you could have identified, um, maybe some trades that you could have taken. Uh, I have my indicators on here. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, nine, 9 EMA, 20 EMA. Purplish one is VWAP, uh, 50 EMA, and then the hourly 20 right here um, is this kind of stair-steppy one. And for it looks stair-steppy because its data is based on a one-hour movement. So every one of these flat parts is an hour long. And then when the new EMA point prints, that is when it moves down. And so that's something that I'll always use. Those are, you know, EMA or the 20 EMA and VWAP or, or hourly 20 EMA and VWAP, I think are two really powerful tools. And we as price action traders, whether we know we're doing it or not, everybody really is trading some form of price action. We want to have some as many things in our favor to identify our trades as we can. And so right off the open on today, I guess we're going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, there was not much happening. Obviously, we were kind of holding our big level right here. Um, you know, and again, this is just from that daily time frame. Um, so we were holding the big level right here and then uh, just consolidating. You know, for that first hour plus of the day, there really wasn't much going on on SPY. Um, it was really just kind of watching it work, you know. And so there's really no trades as a price action trader for us in that first hour of the day. Could you have bought, you know, some of these wicks and made money? Absolutely, you know, or shorted some of these bounces up to the hourly 20? Absolutely. But, you know, 
most people don't like this type of trading. Most people in here were definitely realizing they don't like the one candle trades. Um, you know, I love a one, two, three candle trade. That's my ideal trade personally. But if you're a big, big picture person and you're, sw and you know, you're looking for some of those intraday trades, maybe some longer term swing trades, um, you don't have any interest in this kind of movement just because you're going to be going, you know, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, over and over and over for an hour. And that just wears on you as a trader. So we just have to continue to watch, but we're getting a lot of information here. We're noticing that the, you know, the bounces upward are relatively small. The pushes downward have a little more strength to them, but there's wicks everywhere. So there's not a lot of decision in the market, but what we're seeing is steady holding below the hourly 20, steady holding below all the EMAs, steadily holding below VWAP. So we can watch all of this and be gradually and gradually getting a little bit more bearish, knowing that we're going to want to start looking for some short opportunities, um, you know, if they come. We have no interest here, but we know we have a major level and we know we have pre-market low right below us. So we sit and do nothing until this candle breaks. Um, and we saw it in trade for a lot in voice chat this morning. You know, they were struggling with this, which understandably, like I said, people don't like that. However, we have now broken both of our levels to the downside in one single candle. So Depending how quick on the draw you are, if you're a price action trader, you can start to say, okay, there's a trading opportunity to be had here. Um, and when this candle is selling down, you get to watch it. You know, you have, and this happened quick, you know, and then just stayed down here. So you have minutes to sit here and watch and say, okay, if we're able to close below these levels, then I'm looking for a short entry on any bounce upwards here. And that's we get it on the next candle. You kind of would have had to be quick on the draw, but very, very reasonable because this candle gave you enough time to get in there and you have enough time to formulate your whole plan. So if we break down, we enter on a retest of here and our stop is the level above us. 568. We know we have a 50 cent risk on this trade and that's really what all we're looking for. Then we have to look down. And what are we going to be looking for on some of these lows? You know, where are we going to be looking for a trade? And obviously, we have this nice, big, strong level right here. Um, so our target is 80 cents below us. So we know that we have, you know, we have our 50 cent risk upside. We have our 80 cent potential downside to our first target. Um, so as a price action trader, we look at that. The risk reward is well within our favor. All EMAs pointed down. We're below all EMAs. We're below VWAP. We're below hourly 20. So every single thing is telling us to be short here. And there's nothing telling us to try to catch the bounce. And so the next thing that we do is look for some of our exits. And so if maybe you don't get this sell off, maybe this happens fast. I don't remember what happened on this candle, but your main exit is going to be here. And then you can move your stops down. And this is, you know, I've talked about this a lot in classes, but more and more people are starting to say they really like this type of trading. So what I recommend to people, because we get asked all the time, how do I hold my trades longer? You guys know I scalp, I trade support and resistance. So I, you know, I buy calls at support and in an ideal world, I sell them at resistance. It's that cut and dry for me. Um, I'm not looking for those big, huge runners. I would personally always like a second entry, you know, or a third entry or whatever it is. I want to catch my quick pop by the pullback, catch it again and trade like that, as opposed to hold for big, long moves. Well, what I do when I am holding a day trade or anything like that for a longer time frame is I take my entry and then obviously if I catch this, I'm, I'm trimming here. And then this is also, we're going to talk about opening range. That's what these blue lines are. Um, and this one happens to line up pretty perfectly with the level for us. Um, we're looking at the opening range and saying, okay, this is about to be set because, you know, here's the eight o'clock candle. This is about to be set. So we're likely looking for, you know, a, a bounce here. So we kind of want to tighten up our stops. And where do I put my stops? 
always on the highs of candles. And so if I'm short and I've trimmed here, I'm going to stop out on a close up here. Early in the trade, it's going to be break even. Well, the next thing I do, and generally, you know, if I, my rule of thumb, and this is big in price action, if you trim, you move stops. It's a really, really great rule of thumb because, and we've all done it. Everybody's been there. You know, you're in a trade and you're nice and green and you trim some, and then you don't move your stop. And then you get stopped out at break even or a small loss or whatever it is. And you're like, oh, you know, I, I wish I would have trimmed more. Or I wish I would have tightened up my stop. So I always have my stops based on something on the chart. So next thing I look for, I look for a breakdown candle because I'm short, so I'm looking for a breakdown candle. We get a breakdown candle here, and I'll watch how this candle behaves. Part of price action is reading these candles. This candle right here is slightly worrisome for the short traders, because even though it's red, if you, when we see this kind of a candle, you know, we, we, we didn't push up at all. We sold instantly, but in the end, we actually ended up with over double the amount of buyers as sellers on this candle. So we want to be aware that the market could reverse. We still have our stops up here, but we've now seen this candle print. So we sit and we watch this next candle. It's basically just an inside candle. So again, we sit and watch. The next thing we do is we get a breakdown. So obviously, you know, you get a nice breakdown and you trim. And so when you trim, you move your stop. And all you do is, and if you're on Thinkorswim, it's super easy, you know, on Active Trader, you drag your stop down on your Active Trader and make it line up with somewhere here around these candles. Um, gives you plenty of, you know, this is a big breakdown candle. They won't always be that big, but it gives you plenty of breathing room. And then the next time, you get a breakdown candle, which I would consider this one, you know, the SPY sold another 75 cents. You move your stop again. You likely want to take your trim off. You likely want to be taking, you know, a, an additional trim on even more selling here, but you move it down to here. Um, and that's what I do because for a few different reasons. One, big parabolic moves like this frequently result in sideways movement. You'll almost always get some amount of chop. So if we're tra day trading, you know, same days or next days, you don't want to hold through something like this. We, of course, don't know it's coming, but we've had a very nice entry. You know, don't get me wrong. You missed a buck 50 of the drop at the top, but very nice entry, very nice trim. Stop moved from here, moved to here. One more breakdown candle. And I move in my stop to here. You're in very big profits. And you can see realistically on like a same day or something like that, th these candles will stop it. Even if you have it set up here, just due to the volatility in it, you'll likely get stopped out on one of these candles. Um, and that's fine because you caught most of the trade and then you're stopped out. So now again, you sit and wait. And we notice that, you know, market does the same thing. Everybody always complains about shop. But chop leads to nice moves. So again, the market begins to just chop. And we, you know, if you're a day trader, you already had this nice trade here. You're in the trade for an hour or whatever it was, ultimately getting stopped out. Maybe even you hold it all the way to here and get stopped out. Well, you want to sit and wait for a trade. And we know that we would take a trade on a breakdown of, and I'll, I'll draw this box a little bit better, just I'm... I'm used to looking at them. Sometimes I forget people aren't. Um, and so we would have our box here, you know, of where this consolidation started and where we're, you know, interested in taking a trade. Well, we aren't interested in a trade down here because as price action traders, we want the best entry we can get. And so we want to look for it on a retest somewhere around here is where we would want to be looking to get short. And what the market shows us here, and if we if we pull up the volume, we had, for the first time, some big buyer volume. All of a sudden, we have green, you know, really showing in the volume down here. So all of a sudden, we kind of have some buyer volume off of these lows, and we ultimately have a candle that closes right above here. So if we're price action traders and we're looking for that breakdown retest, maybe we enter here, this is our stop out. So in the end, this trade, 
ended up risking just a few bucks. Um, and you can see that we wanted that stop out because you don't want to get short down here for the exact reason of the bounce might come, you know, does shorting the bottom of a red candle work? Yeah, every once in a while, but more often than not, you make a lot more money short in the top of the green bounce candle. So if you took this entry here, perfectly reasonable. We're still below trends. We're technically rejecting nine EMA. We're at the bottom of the little range on the breakdown retest. Perfectly fine. You take your stop out here. No questions asked. And then again, you sit and wait. Um, next trade, you look to get in here, maybe on the breakout, we hold it. Maybe you look to get in here and you make money, but you don't make much money. And the reason a price action person might not take this trade is, you know, we did take this nice big two buck bounce, but we're down dollars on the day. Trend is still down. EMAs are dropping. VWAP's dropping. You know, we got the nine EMA pointed up, but that's only taking 40 minutes of information into account. These big picture ones still pointed down. So context is everything. You want to be looking to short bounces in this kind of a market. Well, again, for me, I'm not going to take any trades in this little chop zone unless they're a scalp, you know, but I'm not looking for any longer term trades. The next trade that we look for is a break of this zone up or down. And so we're sitting down at the bottom of the zone. All EMAs are still pointed down. We're still looking for the breakdown because market's down. So that's what we have to do, but you don't want to chase lows. You know, you want to let bounces happen. And so Sells down, bounces up. We have a breakdown again here. Well, our entry is the bottom of these ranges. This one happens to coincide with a nine EMA, the bottom of the range. EMAs are again pointing down. So as a price action trader, again, down here on volume, um, again, down here on volume, red, 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 red. You know, we're getting redder as we go. So you short this bounce right here. Your risk is basically a stop above the 20 EMA, 25 cents upside. Ultimate target, 556.71. That is excellent risk reward. You're risking 25 cents for basically a dollar move down. You have one risk for reward. Well, you always need to be aware of lows over here. So if you're really day trading, you're looking for these moves, you're looking for the bigger moves, you want to trim it a low. This one happened to break right through. However, you take a trim here. And now our stop loss that initially was up here above the 20 EMA, we've now broken down and we've had another, another breakdown candle. So we move our stop loss to right there. Next zone, we wanna be targeting is these lows down here, you know, this level down here. And so we, again, take a trim. So we move our stop loss. This is what price action people do. This is how we protect our gains. Well, we've now sold a lot on the market. And all of a sudden, you know, you can see up here, we didn't have a lot of levels, you know, and we kind of moved around in there and then ultimately sold through it. Well, now all of a sudden we're really coming into some big levels. So this is where price action always reminds you to look at the big picture. So all of a sudden we have a bunch of levels down here and we say to ourselves, why do we have all these levels down here? If we don't remember, we go to the daily time frame because we know where they came from. So when we look at the chart here, we again have a very big range. I'm not actually going to put this one on here, but we have a range right here. You know, this is the, we'll put it on for reference. This is the range we're in right here. You can kind of put these highs in if you want, but they're all failures, you know? Um, so we have our range right here. We are at the range low. We are at very important levels and we have a bunch of levels below us and we're selling right to the bottom of that range. So this is a spot as a day trader where big picture, all of a sudden we can kind of look to play a bounce. You know, we, we, see a push down we see a perfect bounce off our level we for the first time in you know like an, in 40 minutes all of a sudden we see like some buying and we see some buying on super big volume compared to the rest of the candles after a big sell candle so all of a sudden we want to have some interest here and i took i i, I took this entry honestly you know i took this entry right around here 
And I took it here because I wasn't looking for a scalp. I was looking for a bit of a bounce. You know, I wanted the market to bounce. And um, I had actually, in full disclosure, I had actually entered calls here as well, rode them up and then rode them red. And so got a, a, a better position down here. And uh, because that to me was the bounce zone. And I take this entry here looking for a bit more of a move because it's a stronger level. It's a stronger area on the chart. This goes back to what I was explaining to you. You always have to take context into account. And so you, when you take the context into account, you say, okay, this is worth it to put risk on here because if I enter here, I'll stop out under 554.61. You know, that's fine with me. So I'm going to be risking, you know, just under a buck, maybe 70 cents a downside here. That's fine with me. You can even run the tighter stop at 555, but I'm going to be looking to hold this trade for a little longer and reclaim multiple levels. Um, because, you know, we've had parabolic selling and all of a sudden we have buyers in the market. And this candle, you know, if you don't, if you don't, watch volume you know then you might miss that all of a sudden this candle right here has 518,000 buyers on it and when you look at the chart you don't see much you kind of see a little indecision candle well when you look at the volume all of a sudden you have like the second biggest volume candle in the last two and a half hours and it's buyers so our context is here we are below emas Absolutely. We're below levels. Absolutely. But all of a sudden, the risk is worth it there with enough potential reward on a bounce to look to trim into that upside and look for a bit, you know, a nice bounce up, a little more risk because you're going to, you know, stop out 70 cents a dollar below you. But, you know, first target is only 50 cents above you if you take the quick trim. Um, if you get if you get this whole move, you already have a dollar in one candle. Then you ride it, and you know if you took this trim, you you basically just move your stop to here. This is the only candle you have, so you move your stop up to just above break even, right around break even, and then you let it ride because it's not a same day. As soon as you get this breakout candle, you take you take this trim here, and your stop moves to here. You get another breakout candle, you move your stop to here, take a trim. You get a third breakout candle, which happens to be at the top of the range. And you're kind of insane if you don't take most of the position off here. This is absolutely parabolic move. No reason to ever go looking for, you know, the four buck move or whatever it did in an hour. Um, you know, no reason to really go looking for that. But price action made this very, very easy for us to make some money, trim at our levels. You can obviously be trimming at EMAs, trim here. You know, that's what's great about price action is we're looking at the charts. If you want to trim the nine EMA, trim it. You want to trim the 20, trim it, trim your levels, trim the 50, trim VWAP. You know, you can use anything to trim and move your stops. I prefer levels personally, and I prefer candles personally. That's where I like to, you know, get my stops set up. So very, very nice move upside that then if you have any runners, you're getting stopped out after, you know, e even if you like, if you enter here, even through all this chop, you're still getting stopped out for like, you know. 150 percent um and then you really don't have much to trade here for the rest of this day you know is there nice moves to be had is there some ema dips yeah but really we found ourselves in the really big picture you know you'd have to widen it out a little bit but in the really big picture we really just ended up finding ourselves doing a whole bunch of range trading with a failed breakdown and a failed breakout that was what most of the second half of the day was. So there was a couple entries. Again, like I said, I didn't, you know, I didn't take many trades today. Um, you know, this was a nice one. Um, this one was fine. Stop out, unfortunately, you know, so you got one good trade. You got a nice stop out here, um, you know, or, you know, by nice, I mean, small, tight stop out. Um, and then uh, on the breakdown, you know, you trim your stops on the breakout. You you're, you trim your contracts and move your stops on the breakout. You just read the chart. You read these candles. Oh, you know, they're selling, they're selling, they're breaking down. I'm moving my stops and following the breakdown. You don't always have to really ratchet your stop up, you know, two, three bucks below where it is because you'll always get stopped out. So use the chart. And so 
it tells us everything about entry and why entry matters. Because if we take the best entry we can, it now becomes very, very easy to trim on the way or move those stops up on the way. And then this is for something I'm kind of seeing some, I, I just realized I've missed a few questions, but I see Raphael's popping up. You wish you had that many contracts to trim on the way up. So yes, and I completely get what you're saying. Um, and it's hard, but the exact same rules apply even if you have one contract follow these same rules. Um, of course, when the profits are nice, you're going to take them. But when you have, you know, when you're using the candles and you're using the chart, it doesn't matter if you're in a hundred contracts or one contract, you should be managing your positions the same. If you have one contract, you know, you can't trim. So maybe you bump these stops up a little bit. Or, you know, if you push to it, maybe you want it on the high of the candle because you don't want to risk giving much profit back. So that's the only thing you're going to switch up with a smaller port or just smaller position size, whatever it is. But even if you have one contract, still just use the candles to tell you what to do, you know, because everybody can see this and say, oh, fake pump, fake pump, fake pump. And then they get a drop. But if you don't have a reason for saying that, then there's no reason to, you know, say it. You need to, all of your trading ideas need to have something based in either technicals or fundamentals. I don't care which it is, but you need to have a reason you're saying the things you are. And if somebody said to me, hey, these candles are being bought up. We're getting, you know, a lot of inside candles, not much volume. We are seeing buyers, but not a ton of volume. We're moving to the top of the range. And now we're starting to doji out. I'm going to try some shorts. I would say, no problem. You know, I would say, great, like excellent trade plan. Yes, we're above the EMAs. We're still above our or below hourly 20, below VWAP, below 50 EMA, below a major level, below multiple major levels, you know, always have that plan laid out for you so you can understand it. Um, and then just look for things where the market, you know, uh, something that I always teach when I, when I teach price action is that, you know, and today was a weird day, but the market doesn't like to set new lows. The market doesn't like to set new highs. That's why, you know, and you guys have all heard me say it, and this is going to kind of be a response to what somebody was saying. Um, you know, isn't this kind of a flag? Sure, but I don't trade those. And it's absolutely not a bull flag. I mean, someone might try to make the argument that here is your pull, but the rule, the real technical rule that nobody talks about on flags Bull flags only happen in uptrends. Bear flags only happen in downtrends. So you can't be down four or five bucks on SPY in a day and have a bull flag forming at the bottom. You know, I will never be convinced of that. Not to mention, change your time frame and all of a sudden it starts to look real different, you know? Um, but I this to me is not, I wouldn't call this a flag. I would call this consolidation. I would call this inside candles. And so really you can be buying the lows of these inside candles looking for the break to front run the break. But I, I personally don't, I want my entry down here because entry for us is everything. So when we look at the market, we want to assume, you know, we don't care about pa patterns. We don't care about any of that stuff. We care about what the charts show us. And something that we know is that the market doesn't like to set new highs or lows intraday. It would much rather stay in a range. That's where, you know, the big money spread traders, they make a killing on range days. And it is why double tops and double bottoms or equal lows and highs are disgustingly effective. You know, they work over and over and over again because, you know, the market set a new high and then it comes down and bounces. It doesn't really want to go set new lows. And then again, we bounce up and... The market doesn't want to go set new highs, you know, this is any of the longs that got trapped up here, get to save themselves, you know, same as down here, the shorts that were trapped trying to short this bounce, you know, those shorts get saved. And that's what the market likes to do is it likes to trade in those ranges, you know, of course, Technically speaking, this is a nice uptrend day. We went from 558, but up to 561, you know, we put a nice $3 move like the market does over and over. So it is technically an uptrend day, but it's spent most of its time ranging. And so if you just go back and look, 
any trend will almost always be met with consolidation. Um, and so that's what I like to look for. You know, here's another example. This is something that I, and you know, people would call this something. I just call it a three push wedge. The market loves to work in threes. We see it in breakouts. We see those kinds of things all the time. If I see, you know, my first leg down, pushing into my second leg down, pushing into my third leg down, this, and we hit calls. I think I alerted calls in my tab maybe right here. We take this trade because price action says, hey, you know, we've tried three times. If we're coming right back down to this trend, I'm longing it for the bounce, you know? So you do those kinds of things. Let the market tell you what to do. Um, even if you just let this low high or this low form, this high form, then you can look for trades right here because you know the market doesn't, like it did set new lows, but you're frequently going to bounce. Same as if you set new highs, you're frequently going to reject. Um, I'm sure all the bears were looking for a head and shoulders right here. Didn't work, obviously. Market rallied the next day. Um, but trade what the market gives you. You know, oh, if we broke down, then try these retest shorts, you know, and you make money. There's money to be made here. We break back into it. You can start to kind of look for some longs, still doing the same thing in your levels. Look for those longs. Look for those new highs, you know. We set a new high from here, falter, and break down. Same thing we, you know, set a high, faltered, break down. Set a low, faltered, bounce up. That's what the market is doing all the time. So these people that are always looking for these straight trend down days or up days tend to get hurt. Just trade what the market gives you. It's part of why the opening range is so effective as well. Um, you know, 80% of breakouts fail. So that means even this breakdown, you know, this breakdown failed. This breakout failed. This breakout failed, you know, plan on that trade these candles, watch the volume, trade your levels, wait for the good entries, you know, bounces up, short them, sell, you know, retest, long them and do it over and over. And some, some of these are hard to catch. I get it, you know, and markets fast, but trade the chart. Okay. So I wanted to get, I know that was kind of fast. I know it was like a long day or a, 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 an info filled day, but uh, I want to try to leave 10 or 15 minutes at the end of this. It looks like we got 15 minutes for some questions, even if it's just look at another chart, um, those kinds of things. Uh, uh, let's check them out, you know, and we can even, you know, discuss price action is always the same on every chart, but I'd love to look at some of your guys' trades or charts that you pulled up and maybe reasons that, you, uh, you took a trade and we can talk about why it did or didn't work. I will catch you later, Birdman. Have a good one. Mm, Al Brooks bringing up XLE. So XLE is a tricky one. Um, I would still treat every, I still treat everything the same. However, um, you know, something that, so like, I, I'm pretty adamant about the fact that the market is, in fact, not manipulated like people think that it is. Uh, you know, most of the time, the market wasn't the issue. Your trade, <laughs> most of the time, the market, wow, well, Lambus, the market wasn't the issue. Your trade was the issue, is what I always try to teach people. And so um, oil is one place where that rule does not apply. I mean, oil is absolutely manipulated it's very hard to catch people love to trade it because of the movement that it makes you could make an argument that it does respect levels well but most of its big movement comes from news and so that's why i think it's bad because you know, you can take a horrible trade on something, you know, or those oil names, you know, your Chevrons or whatever it might be, XLE. You can take trades on these that are really, really bad and get saved by news up or down. You have a very, very good shot at if you, if you are wrong on the trade, but you have enough time on the contract, you can frequently get saved. That's horrible trading, but yeah, let's talk some XLE and I'll identify what I would call, you know, the areas that I would be watching are always going to be the same. Any sort of major highs or lows where I took a bounce, I don't really care. You know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what they are. I want them on the chart. Anywhere the market takes a rejection and sells, takes a bounce and buys. So this is really all I'm going to be looking for. 
Then the next thing I'm going to take note of is the major range that, you know, it's currently working in. So this was the sell-off and then the attempted trend break. So this to me is our low and our high of this range um, with, you know, what ultimately ended up being a failed breakout, but this was the low and high of this range. So for me, I actually see one more level that I want on there. For me, these are the levels I'm trading on this day. Um, you know, again, I wanted this one because obviously big bounce, probably news, normally is, same as here, probably news. Oh yeah, this was all when the market was dying, you know, everything was dying. So here's XLE. And now we go into the day and we do the exact same thing. We look into big picture. Hey, you know, we're below the hourly 20. Hourly 20 is pointed straight down. Market, you know, oil obviously having a hard time. Trend is down in the big picture. Um, we sell down. And right here, you can actually look to get long. And we're treating it like a range and we're treating it as range trading. So right here, you can look to get long um, for the move upwards to this level. Same as if you push up to here, you can look to get short. Maybe you get long down here. Um, but at this point, we know the market is, is, is ranging on this thing. So maybe you take this entry, maybe you don't, you know, seller volume is pretty high. If you do, you get blown out, classic oil. And then three candles later, you're back in the green. Um, this is one nice thing about this, at least to me, is if I took these longs and I caught the bounce, then nice. If I take these shorts here or these longs here, um, my hard stop is going to be right here. So, you know, price action tells me that if the market's going to cut through this low after failing a breakout and now breaking down, if the market's going to cut through this low, it's probably going to cut a little ways through this low. So, again, uh, my hard stop is likely somewhere right around here. So that's where I'm going to take the hard stop out. And then I don't care about this candle. I don't care about this candle. I care about this candle. And I say, well, I probably want to be long off this level again, even if I'm going to stop out. And again, you get long and you look for the move to your level. Obviously, trim some EMA is on the way. You know, thankfully, it's XOM. So this is only 50 cent move or whatever. Um, so you can trim halfway up and then trim at your level. And then you're out because you're fighting the trend and, you know, the overall trend. So you're only looking for bounces quickly when you're fighting the trend. And then downside you can obviously short below there but i mean eh, that opening range offered a decent one there um but you can short below there but again at this point you're basically just looking at a range and there's probably more fun to be had than you know 50 cent moves on xlm however if you are into the big picture which you always should be and you're looking for longer day trades then you want to go look at this four hour chart and when we're taking these pushes up to these levels to the high of this range this is where you want to be shorting you wanted to be short yesterday, you know, you wanted to, you want to be short yesterday or the day before, you know, these are the places you want to be short. When everybody's chasing the oil upside move, you always need to let the price action tell you, hey, we have no luck up here. Why would I assume we're going to have luck up here this time? So that's where you look to take your entries. You know, you get in your, your 92, your stop is 30 cents above you. It is a total no brainer short. Um, so always take that big picture into account. And then of course, you know, you sell to the 20, you probably want to be out, but you're up nice enough and in the money now that this is a day trade that can turn into a swing trade because you're up here at these highs, you're closing below these levels. There's plenty of reason to stick with this trade. You know, you're right so far. And then again, closing below hourly 20, closing below VWAP, ride it on down, you know? So overall, everybody should have been looking short on this afterwards. Um, uh, but People probably learn. Another one, Disney. We can talk about this one. Disney, you need very few levels on the chart, you know? Um, and so right down here, you know, this, this is what I did. I looked at this price action around here. I said, where could we not get by? Where did we fail? Where did we reject? I slot the line on the chart. Same down here. This is basically the top of the gap, big bounce point. We would take bounces up to this next level, couldn't break below it. When we ultimately got below, we sold down, you know? I marked this low as well. So we sell down to here. So you need very few levels on the chart. I'd honestly probably even make a little zone like this. And then you go into the short time frame and you short this. You don't expect to break out. You don't look for patterns. You short that. 
Because you know, if you're getting short here on this big picture, then you just keep the stop tight. So the risk reward, you're risking 25 cents of upside to be short up here. Um, and if you're long, your stops really need to be down, you know, here. Your stops probably need to be at the lows of this previous range. So, you know, if you try to get long, you're really just fighting two levels to maybe if you're lucky, get a dollar move upside. But if you're wrong, you get a two or three dollar move against you. So you short this and maybe you don't short it on the first day, but you absolutely watch it the next day. And this is where you look to get short. This is where I got short. This is where I sold my short. Unfortunately, I should have read that thing. But that's where you look to get short because you assume those breakouts aren't coming and you do not buy calls on big breakout candles like this. How many times have we seen alerts or seen people in trade floor that chase the move and then they get blown out and they, you know, they don't accept accountability that it was the issue. You know, even magician, man, we talked about, we talked about his AMD, um, you know, on the AMD chart, we don't have a lot going on, you know, like there's not like it's, living in a range it's got ranges all over the place failed breakouts failed breakdowns bouncing back up well if we look at this chart you don't need to know much but on this buy up we got 160 right here that should probably be on there but we got the old range we even have another range we got strong level 158 obviously we got 160 right here this is a you know this right here is just like anywhere in these bounces up to here is an absolutely perfect entry for an AMD short, you know? And so we actually talked about it in my class over here. Um, oh, look, it's still there. This was in another class. So we push up to the gap bottom, can't break above it, lose all EMAs, lose VWAP, and then range below them and ultimately break down and break the hourly 20. Here's the short entry. Did you miss a little bit of the move downside, you know, from the absolute top? Yeah, here's the short entry. And then... If you're writing these contracts, just to, you know, give the example of stop outs again, um, you know, say you take this short entry and then you finally get this nice breakdown candle. Well, you move your stop to basically here, you know, you don't, you don't want to go too far. You kind of want those previous candles. So somewhere up in here, then you get continued breakdown. You should obviously be trimming, but if you, if you don't, because you know, it's only 50 cents or whatever, I don't know why you wouldn't trim more, but, and you leave your stop there you still aren't getting stopped out. And if you do, it just offers you another re-entry of fails above the 90 EMA, breaks below the 90 EMA, breaks below the level, get into the trade here. And then break down candle, move your stop. Break down candle, move your stop. Break down candle, move your stop, you know? And you could erode this thing. I mean, this is one of the most like beautiful price action trades I've seen in a while. You could have best case scenario got in at 157, wrote it all the way down to the 150 three basically i mean really 150 250 and i wouldn't have even scolded you for still being in that trade you know this is just the charts telling you stay short um and then maybe you get stopped out you know on the little bounce here if this you know when this bounce comes well then at the time this was a daily sma so you can short this or if you don't like that, then you can even wait for the breakdown retest on the EMA right here and catch a little bit more downside. Again, even still just trailing these stops here and catch yourself a nice two buck move downside. And this is all just trading the chart, you know, no panic. You know where your stops are, you know where your entries are. And once you have those planned, the, the, it becomes way, way easier to hold those trades and just let the price action tell you what to do. Um, so. That's really all I got. If there ain't no more questions. Oh, I see some questions. Nice one, Sushi. Silver isn't. Silver is likely the only thing that's manipulated more than oil. Uh, six, what do you mean by KO? Uh, or what do you mean trade differently? Uh, Apple, let's check it out. I know that I have some levels on this thing. So, you took them on the break at pre market high. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, it slid. I get it. I will say that the only thing that I don't love about that was 
this is still, and I should have this level on here. Let's just see where it's at. Um, you know, that's probably going to end up being around that pre-market high. Um, so this right here is still the top of the range. And so it did break out. It did push a dollar above the top of the range. I am so apprehensive to take these trades. I just, I typically won't. Not on that first attempt outside of the range. They rarely, rarely work. And so the only, the trade that I see here that could have worked, at least for me, for Apple, um, no entry here. I don't, these, this is too much indecision in the early in the day on something like Apple. The one where I start to like it is candle closes above the level here, candle closes above the level here. You've now had 10 minutes to kind of watch it, see some buyer volume coming in, and know that your entry is here, stops likely below VWAP, even below these lows, you know, give it 30, 40 cents against you. Um, and you're kind of looking for some ranged activity, so just keep it tight, you know? And then you could have got a nice little pop to those previous highs, but still, I don't love this entry. This candle alone makes it hard for me to want to buy. Um, you know, it did end up almost even buyers to sellers, but this is kind of the candle that should, could, could reverse on you. Um, and then even this one, Maybe that was an entry, but you'd have to be quick on the draw. Still don't love it, you know. Well, so six, I see what, you know. So I can only partially agree with that. And, you know, and I did just state that I don't trade patterns at all. Um, These slow mover names, you know, T, Coca-Cola, those kinds of things I tell people to trade all the time. Um. They do follow like exactly what the market, like that's why I recommend them to people, honestly, is that, you know, uh, you, they do what they should do, you know, and they reject where they should reject. They bounce where they should bounce. The issue that I won't say the issue that this one's having is just being at these all time highs. That of course makes it a little bit different, but if you go back in time, like you can, you know, hit the weekly charts on things like Coca-Cola and mark some of these major levels, you know, and and have those on the charts. And then if you when you have these on the charts and you start zooming into some of these shorter time frames, you start to see, you know, breakdowns come where breakdowns should come. You know, cons rejections come about where they should come consolidation happens where you'd expect consolidation when a breakout comes it moves to the next level um you know even this one i if i i obviously didn't have the info on the weekly chart but we're setting tops here we're setting top here we're setting the top here well when we break it you buy those dips to that level you know and so i would argue that these things actually tend to trade very technical i think coca-cola is just on an epic run right now so it's getting a little bit tricky, definitely overextended on the daily just because of where it's trading at, you know. Um, but I think they trade pretty dang technical. Um, that's why I like them, you know, they bounce where they should. I was even like ATT, we got very few levels on it today, but it will almost always ride right where you want it to on a level, you know. They tend to really, if you have good levels you know, well thought out levels, they'll tend to work for you over and over again. And these levels are back from in 2021 or something like that, 2022. So, um, you know, they'll work for you. They'll work for you. Okay, well, if that's uh, when will this be posted? Likely tomorrow or the next day, pretty soon, pretty soon. Um, but as always, like I like to tell everybody, uh, uh, you know, my DMs are always open. If you ever have a question, shoot, you know, shoot me those questions. Look at Costco. That thing is just a beast lately. Wow, what a sell on it today, though. Clobbered, huh? Wow. Wow, that thing was down $30 at one point. I mean, everything was smoked, but wow, nice one. This was the last time I was trading Costco. Probably should have held that breakout, apparently. Okay, well, that's going to do it. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, as always, you know, my DMs always open. Thanks for being here. And uh, we'll catch you all tomorrow.
Yeah, thank you all so much. And we will see you tomorrow. Have a good one.